6.3 endothermic and exothermic reactions, Thursday, January. The reference table you need for this lesson is table I, which is used to uh, determine something called the value of delta H for different chemical reactions. Let's move on to the lesson. Let's first talk about delta H and types of reactions on table I. All right, delta H or triangle H refers to something um, known as heat being released or absorbed, all right? So triangle H just refers to whether heat is released or absorbed. We can find if heat is released or absorbed using table I, which gives us the value of triangle H or delta H for different reactions. We'll talk about what different delta H or triangle H values mean in detail. For now, just know that delta H being less than zero or negative means exothermic, whereas delta H being greater than zero or positive means endothermic. Let's first talk about endothermic reactions. In endothermic reactions, energy is absorbed by the reactants in a reaction, and this is shown by uh, heat entering on the reactant side. Think EN in enter stands for um, endothermic. All right, because heat enters into the object away from the outside, the outside or thermometer temperature decreases, making the surroundings colder because heat is entering away from the outside. Therefore, the surroundings um, get colder and the outside thermometer temperature decreases. All right, for endothermic reactions, delta H is generally greater than zero, or in other words, um, positive because heat enters the object or is gained by the object. All right, and to remember endothermic reactions, just remember that heat enters something. All right, the EN in enters um, stand, will help you remember that it is an endothermic reaction since the first two letters in endothermic are EN. All right, the equation for an endothermic reaction is written as follows. A plus B reactants in blue plus heat in red um, leads to C plus D, which are the products in uh, purple. All right, note that heat is always on the reactant side for endothermic reactions uh, because heat is absorbed by the reactants. All right, um, or enters the reaction on the reactant side. So to remember endothermic reactions and where heat is in the reaction, just remember heat enters the reaction, EN for endothermic meaning heat enters the reaction on the reactant side. All right, the reactants show the entrance of the reaction or where everything starts. So heat is at the entrance of the reaction for an endothermic reaction. Note that EN and entrance are also the first two letters of endothermic. So entrance of reaction equals endothermic. If it's on the left side, meaning the reactant side of the reaction, then it's endothermic because it's entering into the object. Now let's talk about exothermic reactions, the reverse. So in exothermic reactions, uh, energy is released by products in a uh, reaction, and this is shown by heat exiting on the product side. Think EX and exit stands for exothermic. All right, because heat exits from the object uh, towards the outside, the outside or thermometer temperature increases, uh, making the surroundings outside the object warmer. All right, so for um, exothermic reactions, uh, delta H is generally less than zero, or in other words, negative, because heat exits the object, or in other words, is lost by the object. To remember exothermic reactions, remember that heat exits something. The EX in exits will help you remember that it is an exothermic reaction, since the first two letters in exothermic are EX, meaning exits. All right? Now, the equation for an exothermic reaction is written as follows. A plus B reactants in blue um, leads to C plus D products in purple plus heat in red. And note that heat is always on the product side for exothermic reactions since heat is released by the products or exits the reaction on the product side. So to remember exothermic reactions and where heat is in the reaction, just remember that heat exits the reaction for an exothermic reaction. The products show the exit of the reaction, so heat is at the exit of the reaction for an exothermic reaction. Note that EX and exit are also the first two letters of exothermic. All right, so just remember exothermic means uh, energy is released by products, meaning it exits on the product side, the right side. So if heat is on the right side of the reaction, then it, then it is an exothermic reaction because it's released by the products. And therefore, since you're releasing heat, the outside temperature increases, 
and delta H is less than zero or negative because heat is lost by the object since it exits the object. All right, now let's see how to classify reactions as being endothermic or exothermic using table I. Remember that triangle H or delta H refers to heat being released or absorbed. And using table I, we can find the value of delta H and therefore classify the reaction as being endothermic or exothermic, depending on what the value of delta H actually is. So for the purposes of this slide specifically, just remember that delta H being less than zero means the reaction is exothermic, whereas delta H being greater than zero means that the reaction is um, endothermic. All right, so let's see some examples of using this information in table I. So for reaction one, 2H2 plus a 2H2G plus O2G yields 2H2O um, L. All right, uh, and table I lists delta H here as being negative 571.6 kJ, so it's exothermic since delta H is less than zero. For reaction two, 2C8H18L plus 25O2G yields 16CO2G plus 18H2O L. Um, table I lists delta H as being negative 10,943 kilojoules, so it's exothermic since delta H is less than zero. All right, since both reactions one and two shown here are exothermic, we know that as the products form in each reaction, heat is released, causing the outside or thermometer temperature to increase as a result. All right, that is, as H2O forms um, in reaction one, and as CO2G and H2OL form in reaction two, heat is released and outside temperature increases. All right, so that's what you need to know here. For reaction three, N2G plus O2G yields 2NOG, table I lists delta H as being positive 182.6 kJ, so it's endothermic since delta H is greater than zero. And since reaction three is considered endothermic, um, we know that as the product forms in this reaction, heat is absorbed, causing the outside thermometer temperature to decrease as a result. Specifically, as NOG forms in this reaction three, heat is absorbed and the outside temperature decreases as a result. Now let's see examples of classifying reactions as being endothermic or exothermic. So for this first example here, we have four reactions and we can look up the delta H values in table I. So for A, we have CS plus O2G giving CO2G, right? So on table I, uh, delta H equals negative 393.5 kJ. So reaction A is exothermic since delta H is less than zero. For BKNO3AQ uh, in aqueous solution, gives K plus and NO3 minus, all right? And on table I, this reaction uh, is listed, or this change is listed as being um, positive 34.89 Kj. So it's endothermic since delta H is greater than zero. For C2C plus H2 gives C2H2. On table I, delta H is listed as being positive 227.4 Kj, so it's endothermic since delta H is greater than zero. Finally, for uh, D, NaCl S in water gives Na plus and Cl minus. And on table I, delta H is positive 3.88 Kj, so it's endothermic since delta H is greater than zero. So for the second example, we can see, we can just use where the heat is in the reaction to find out if it's exothermic or if it's endothermic. And A is an exothermic reaction because the process releases heat on the product side as SO3 forms. We can see this because the heat is on the product or the right side. And we know this because energy is on the right side and energy therefore is a product, making it exothermic. Remember, exothermic always releases energy in the product side. So therefore we know this exothermic. All right. Um, and B is an endothermic reaction because the process needs heat to form hydrogen and oxygen gas and energy is absorbed on the reactant side, so delta H is positive, and energy is on the left side of the arrow. That's how we know this is endothermic, whereas this is exothermic. This is on the product side, so therefore we know that it releases heat. On the other hand, this, uh, the energy or heat is on the left side, so we know that it's absorbed, and therefore uh, the heat of reaction must be positive. 
Now, now let's go over the same problem. So in number one, it says explain changes in energy and delta H for the following reactions. So we have to decide whether first is energy released or absorbed, and finally, what is the delta H value of each reaction. Right, so um, notice how in both these reactions in number one that neither of them has energy anywhere in the equation. So where we have to look is on table I. So if we do that, we'll see that um, this first reaction uh, 4Al plus 3O2 gives you 2Al2O3, and the second reaction, N2O2, N2 gas plus O2 gas gives you 2NO, are both listed here and here. As you can see, 4Als plus 3O2G gives you 2Al2O3, has a delta H value on table I of negative 3,351. So delta H is less than zero for this reaction. For this reaction down here, N2 plus O2 gives you uh, 2 NOG. You'll see that delta H is greater than um, zero since it's positive 182. So based on these values, we can see that, um, first of all, for the first reaction, as we just saw, delta H is equal to negative 3,351 kilojoules from table I. Therefore, um, delta H is less than zero, right, because obviously it's negative. Since it's negative, we know that um, that would mean that's exothermic, since delta H being less than zero always means it's exothermic. And since it's exothermic, we know that the exo in exothermic means that energy is released or exits. On the other hand, uh, for this reaction, N2G plus O2G gives you 2NOG, we know that the delta H value here from table I, as we just saw, is positive 182.6 uh, kilojoules, um, therefore, based on that, we can see that delta H is greater than zero since delta H is positive, right? Since delta H is positive or greater than zero, we know that therefore it is endothermic as a reaction. And let's remember that the endo and endothermic means that heat enters, or in other words, heat is absorbed. So therefore, we know that energy is absorbed in this reaction since it's endothermic and delta H is greater than zero. So just remember for que for questions like these where you don't have the energy, you have to look it up in table I. If delta H is less than zero, it's exothermic, meaning energy exits or is released. Whereas in the case of 1B, like in the case of 1B, if um, you don't have energy, you have to look it up in table I, and if delta H is greater than zero, then that means it's endothermic, meaning energy enters or is absorbed. Okay? With number two, it says classify the following reactions and explain delta H. So what this question is asking is you have to... Um, classify the reaction as being endo or exothermic as we just learned and explain what it is in terms of delta H. So it says carbon solid and oxygen gas give you carbon dioxide gas. So if we think about what we did in class today, we have uh, solid carbon and oxygen gas uh, become carbon dioxide gas. So we have to find CS, since C is carbon and S is solid, plus oxygen gas, which is O2 gas, will give you carbon dioxide gas, which is CO2 gas. So if we look for um, CS plus O2G gives you CO2, this is the reaction, and we need to look up its delta H. Its delta H value on table I, as we can see, is negative 393.5 kilojoules. All right, so since delta H is negative 393.5 kilojoules, delta H is less than zero. Since delta H is less than zero, as we know, that means it is exothermic, right? Since exothermic is always delta H is less than zero. And since this reaction is delta H is less than zero or exothermic, we know heat is released or exits based on the exo and exothermic. For 2Cs plus 2H2G gives you C2H4G, we can look that up on table I. Um, I won't do that again. You can look that up on your own. But if you look it up, you'll see that delta H is equal to positive 52.4 kilojoules. Since delta H is greater than zero, we know that um, that would make it endothermic since delta H is positive, right? And since this reaction is endothermic, we know that heat enters or is absorbed, okay? For 2C, um, this reaction is very easy to interpret because you don't have to look up in table I. The reason why is because we already have heat somewhere in the equation. Heat here is on the right side of the equation. Since heat is on the right side of the equation or the product side of the equation, we know that heat exits, right? Since heat exits, we know, or is on the product side of the equation, the exit side is the product side, we know that this is exothermic. Since it's exothermic, we know delta H is less than zero. And since this reaction is exothermic, it also means that heat exits or is released. How we know, again, is because heat is in the product side or the exit side. All right? For 2D, again, we don't need to look very far. We don't even need to look in the table I because um, 
we see that the heat part is here on the reactant side. Since heat is on the reactant side, we know that it's at the entrance or the start of the reaction. Since it's at the entrance or the start of the reaction, we know heat enters, meaning this reaction is endothermic. Since this reaction is endothermic, since it, heat is on the entrance side or the reactant side, we know delta H is greater than zero, since endothermic is only when delta H is greater than zero. Also, since we know it's endothermic as a reaction, we also know that heat must enter or be absorbed because um, heat entering or absorbing only occurs when you have an endothermic reaction. Again, how we know this is endothermic is that heat is in the reactant side or the entrance side where you start. So therefore, it's endothermic, delta H is greater than zero, and heat is absorbed. For 2E, um, if we look in this reaction, we don't have to look far because we already see the heat is, in the, is on the product side or the exit side. Since heat is on the product side or the exit side where... Um, you get everything out at the end. We know this is exothermic since heat is at the exit side or at the end. Since it's exothermic, we know that delta H must be less than zero. All right, since um, when it's exothermic, delta H must be less than zero. Furthermore, since this is an exothermic reaction, we know, we know that heat must be exiting or must be released. Because only in exothermic reactions does heat exit or get released. All right, so there we go. That's how you know that this reaction is exothermic delta H is less than zero and he's released. And how we know is because he is in the products. For F, um, we don't need to look very far again because we see that heat is on the reactant side here. Since he is on the reactant side here, we know that um, heat is on the entrance side or the reactant side where everything enters and starts off. Since heat is on the entrance side, the EN and ENTER tells us that this is an endothermic reaction since only in endothermic reactions will heat be on the reactant side or the entrance side. Since this reaction is endothermic, we also know that delta H is greater than zero, obviously, because only for endothermic reactions will delta H be greater than zero. Also, since this is an endothermic reaction, we know that heat is absorbed or enters on the reactant side. All right? Uh, so there you go. That's, that's that for uh, F. Finally, for G, we don't have heat anywhere in the reaction, so we need to look on table I. If we look on table I, we have um, H plus AQ plus OH minus AQ gives you H2O liquid, and we see that the delta H in this column right here is negative 55.8 kilojoules. Since delta H is negative 55.8 kilojoules for this reaction, we know that delta H is less than zero. Since delta H is less than zero, we know that that indicates that there's an exothermic reaction, since only for exothermic reactions will delta H be less than zero. And um, since it's exothermic, we know that heat will exit or be released on the product side. Okay? In number three, it says the thermometer is in a beaker of water. Explain the following statement. So let's say NaClS dissolving in water leads to the thermometer reading decreasing. All right? The reason why um, the thermometer reading outside is decreasing is because all the heat is being sucked out from the surroundings and into the solution. Since heat is going into the solid that you're talking about, this would be considered endothermic because heat is entering the solid. Remember, the solid is always where you focus. If heat enters the solid, the outside temperature will decrease. So since the outside temperature is decreasing, that tells you it's endothermic, right? Since this is endothermic, we know that delta H is greater than zero. Heat must enter or be absorbed, and therefore the outside temperature or thermometer temperature decreases because all the heat's going away from the outside and towards the inside. But the, the, but the short explanation, that long explanation I just gave you, is that if you have a thermometer reading outside decreasing, that means that you have an endothermic reaction. That's all you got to know. And endothermic, as we know, is delta H is greater than zero and heat is absorbed. All right, for B, we have NaOH dissolved in water and it leads to thermometer readings increasing. Since the outside or thermometer temperature increases on the outside, um, we know that that's an exothermic process. The way we know that is the following. We have a thermometer on the outside and the surroundings. And if the solids somehow release heat to this heat outside, if heat's going to the outside towards the thermometer, that's what will make the temperature go up. Since heat's exiting to the outside away from the solid, that's why it's exothermic. So since it's exothermic, we know that the outside thermometer temperature increases and heat is going towards it. Delta H will be less than zero once exothermic, and therefore heat will be exiting or released. But the short explanation of what I just said in summary, is that whenever the outside temperature increases, it's exothermic because heat's going out towards it. Delta H will be less than zero and heat is released. So basically for a question like uh, number three where, where they're talking about the surrounding temperature, all you got to remember is this. If the surrounding temperature decreases, then it's endothermic 
meaning delta H is greater than zero and heat is absorbed. On the other hand, if the outside thermometer temperature increases, it's an exothermic process, meaning delta H is less than zero and heat is released. All right, so just remember that. If the outside temperature decreases, it's endothermic, meaning delta H is greater than zero and uh, heat is absorbed. On the other hand, if the, if the outside thermometer temperature increases, it's an exothermic process, delta H is less than zero and heat is released. This first part of the guide practice questions you can do on your own is very simple. Just remember that if the reaction does not have heat anywhere in it, um, Look it up on table I to determine, you know, whether it's endo or exothermic. And if heat is somewhere in the uh, reaction, then if heat is on the reactant side, let's remember that means it enters, meaning it's endothermic and delta H is greater than zero, right? And heat is absorbed. On the other hand, if the heat is on the product side or the right side of the reaction, that means it's exiting, meaning the reaction is exothermic, delta H is less than zero, and heat is released. For a question like three, let's remember if the thermometer temperature increases on the outside, it's exothermic, delta H is less than zero and heat is released. On the other hand, if the thermometer being decreases, um, it's an endothermic process, meaning uh, delta H is greater than zero and heat is absorbed. Now, number four, this is at STP, and we have to decide which one of these four samples, when it dissolves in water, meaning when it, you know, dissolves in water and breaks apart, uh, absorbs the greatest amount of energy, right? So we have four samples, NH4, NO3, NaCl, NH4Cl, and NLIBR. So we have to look up these values for di the dissolving processes on table I. So um, we have to figure out which one absorbs the greatest amount of heat as the entire sample dissolves, right? So because it says absorb here, the keyword absorb here tells you that heat enters or it's an endothermic reaction, meaning the answer has to be a positive delta H value. Not only does that have a positive delta H value, but also because the question asks which compound absorbs the greatest amount of heat um, that means we have to find not only the po a positive delta H value but which uh, positive delta H value is the greatest for the dissolving process so if we check on table I NH4Cl when it dissolves according to this reaction um, as one of the options has a positive delta H value right NH4 NO3 when it dissolves in water based on table I has a positive delta H value NaCl, when it dissolves in water based on this reaction, has a positive delta H value. And LIBR, when it dissolves in water, has a negative delta H value. So we got to find out which one not only has a positive delta H value since it's absorbing heat, but also since it involves absorbing the greatest amount of heat, which one has the greatest positive delta H value. So the answer automatically is not LIBR because LIBR is exothermic, meaning it would release heat, so that doesn't work. We have to compare these three and see which one has the po greatest positive delta H value. The one that has the greatest positive delta H value is NH4NO3 because that's the greatest positive value of 25.69 kilojoules. So dissolving NH4NO3 has the greatest positive delta H value when dissolved in water out of these three reactions as we just saw in table I. Therefore, since it has the greatest positive delta H value, it would, it would absorb the greatest amount of energy. That's because the positive delta H value being high means not only does it absorb energy as suggested by positive delta H, but since it's the biggest positive delta H, it absorbs the most amount numerically. So that's why NH4NO3 uh, absorbs the greatest amount of heat because out of these four options, it has the greatest positive delta H value, so therefore it absorbs the greatest amount of energy out of any of these four. Okay, so the answer is NH4NO3. Now, uh, number five is very similar to number four. It says, which equation represents a change resulting in the greatest quantity of energy absorbed and the greatest quanti quantity of energy released? Let's remember that um, absorbing means that heat enters, meaning it's an endothermic reaction. Since it's an endothermic reaction, that would mean a positive delta H value. For release, that would mean an exiting of heat or an exothermic reaction, which means a negative delta H value. And since the question is asking the greatest quantity of energy absorbed, the one that absorbs the greatest energy would obviously have the greatest delta H value, right? Since absorb is positive and you absorb the greatest amount of energy, the one that absorbs the greatest amount of energy would be the greatest delta H value. And release the greatest amount of energy would mean the greatest negative delta H value. That's because release means negative um, delta H. And releasing the greatest energy, therefore, would be the greatest negative delta H value. So we've got to compare these four reactions on table I and see which one has the greatest positive delta H value to find out which absorbs the greatest amount of energy and find out which one of these four reactions has the greatest uh, negative delta H value to find out which one releases the greatest amount of energy. So the one that releases the greatest positive um, amount of delta H would be... Um, H2 plus I2 gives you 2HI. That's because um, that's because for 
uh, has the greatest positive delta H value. Since 4 has the greatest positive delta H value, that would mean it would observe the greatest amount of energy. So in short, 4 absorbs the greatest amount of energy because it has the greatest positive delta H value, positive 53.0 kilojoules. On the other hand, 2 would release the greatest amount of energy. That's because 2 or uh, CH4 gas plus 2O2 gas gives you CO2 gas plus 2H2O liquid has the greatest negative delta H value. Since 2 has the greatest negative delta H value, it would release the greatest amount of energy. So 2 would release the greatest amount of energy because it has the greatest negative delta H value, and 4 would absorb the greatest amount of energy because it has the greatest positive delta H value. So number six, as in a lab investigation, lithium bromide was dissolved in water. Laboratory procedures and the corresponding observations made by a student are shown in the table below, right? Before I get into this, the problem here, or the question here asks that you state evidence from the investigation that indicates that the process of dissolving LIBR in water is exothermic. Before we do anything, let's remember what I said um, in the last slide. Let's remember... Sorry, uh, two slides ago. Remember that I said that when the thermometer temperature increases... I asked you to memorize that that's exothermic, meaning delta H is less than zero and heat is released, right? And I also asked you to memorize that when the outside therm or thermometer reading decreases, that um, the process is endothermic, delta H is greater than zero and heat is absorbed, right? Um, so to indicate that um, the process of LIBR dissolving water is exothermic, we have to look at the observations here. If we look, the temperature of the water was 37.0 degrees Celsius after you look at the observation from step one. Right? Um, and the observation step four, if you look, is that the temperature of the solution, not the water, but the solution, is 49.2 degrees Celsius. So what you notice is, go is going from the water, H2O liquid, at 37 degrees Celsius, to the temperature of the solution, which is 49.2 degrees Celsius, the temperature increases. Since the temperature increases, that will tell you that, that, it, that the uh, process of dissolving LIBR solid in water is exothermic because if you increase temperature in the surroundings, that means it's exothermic, delta H is less than zero, and that the process is exothermic since he is being released, right? But the simpler way of saying this is by directly quoting evidence from the passage. The more easy way of saying this is the dissolving at LIBRS is exothermic because the temperature of the solution here, 49.2 degrees Celsius, is higher than the temperature of water, 37.0 degrees Celsius. Okay, so what I want you to do is when you're given this on the regions, compare the temperature of the solution to the temperature of the water. If, so that's all you need to know. Basically, um, think about it this way. Compare the temperature of the solution to the temperature of the water. Basically, in this case, as was shown in this case, if the temperature of the solution is greater than the temperature of the water, then it's an exothermic process. On the other hand, let's say that the temperature of the solution was less than the temperature of the water. If the temperature solution was less than the temperature of the water, that would be endothermic. All right, so that's how you should think about it when you're answering a region's question like this, when you have to give evidence that a process is endothermic or exothermic. In this case, the temperature of the solution is greater than the temperature of the water. Since the temperature of the solution is greater than the temperature of the water, this is an exothermic process. On the other hand, if they asked you to prove that a process was um, endothermic, then you would have to say that the temperature of the solution is less than the temperature of the water. So think about it that way. Finally, please complete the homework questions on this slide and this slide, along with the checkpoint questions. So you have to do questions one through six, just like the normal homework questions. And in addition to that, you have to do the checkpoint questions that we do daily, which have popped up throughout this video. Thank you very much. Have a great day. See you in the next class. Bye-bye.